One day, I was talking to a friend of mine about my hobby, and he said, it's very, very geeky, but it's very, very cool. It can only be radio controlled helicopters. Welcome to the heli shed. Legends, heli heads and choppers, welcome to part two, where we're gonna start building this T-Rex 700. I can't contain myself, I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to start building the T-Rex 700 um, for the Bell 222. We're going to start off uh, doing it completely different. Why not? Uh, everybody out there who does build videos starts from the front and works their way to the back. We're going to start from the back and work our way to the front. Why not? Uh, before we do, though, let's, um, let's visit some basic rules that we should conform to when we're building a uh, radio control helicopter. Take a listen to this. Rule number one. Alcohol gives meaning. And it can be used for cleaning. <coughs> Rule two. First construct it and then Loctite it. Rule three. Building a radio controlled helicopter is like having sex. Take your time, don't rush it. Enjoy every bit of it. Hold off from getting too excited. Take regular breaks to calm the blood pressure. And whatever you do, do not finish early. Well, that's what my wife tells me. Right? There we have it. So use alcohol if you need to do any cleaning, uh, especially if you're taking screws out and it's got some Loctite on there. Um, you know, use the alcohol on the rag and, 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 and screw the screw into the rag, cleans the threads out. Uh, the second rule, of course, is we're only ever gonna use Loctite blue we're only ever going to use Loctite blue, not red. Red is bad, bad, bad. Red, red equals dead. Red, no. Um, and of course, rule number three, take your time. Enjoy every bit of it, etc. Um, okay, cool. Um, confession to make. Okay, this is, the, this is the third time I've done this intro, and I'll tell you why, because uh, I spent a long time doing the videos, etc. But something catastrophic happened to the uh, video, and I pretty much lost it all. And guess what? I've already done the build um, for the rear tail, um, for the rear drive, for the rear blade grips. I was covering bearings and all sorts. So I can't show you any of that. Uh, this is not like any other build video, is it? It's a build video where I'm not showing you um, the build. I'm showing you the end result. Let's take a quick look. Okay, this is what the fuss was all about. Um, and like I said, genuinely, I'm, I'm, I'm really gutted. As I spent a long time videoing it and a long time going through all the parts, etc. And some top tips and uh, it's just typical. I'm going to call it fate. Uh, this is the rear gearbox for the helicopter. Uh, one of the tips I said is that when you're building this, always uh, build it so that you orientate yourself as if you are at the rear of the machine looking forward um, in which case for me it's like uh, it's like that um, and we've got three main component parts here um, we've got the uh, the actual gearbox here or the main drive um, you can see that now main drive and then you've got the umbrella gear here You've then got the um, the gubbins in the middle here, which is the uh, control arm, which moves the which moves the pitch slider. This wonderful piece of engineering here, um, and that then moves the uh, tail blades um, when you move the rudder up and down. And on the control rod, that moves the pitch. Um, I covered loads of different things on this. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go back through it all. My advice to you is to have a look at any build video there on any out there on any T-Rex rear um, gearbox and we're all pretty much saying the same thing. Um, all I'll say to you is this. It should be smooth um, and the gears should mesh perfectly well. There should be no rubbing, no binding, no nothing. If there is, take it apart and do it again. Remember, of course, rule two, construct it first and then use Loctite. And we're only 
ever going to use Loctite Blue. We never use red. Take a look at Loctite rules. Rule one, if metal on metal is true, then use blue. Rule two, if fitting a bearing, use green. Okay, bear, bear, bearing, I mean bearing. Bearing doesn't rhyme with green, so it didn't sound right, so I said bearing, but you get the point. Rule three, never use red. Not in the shed! There we go, simple. So we're using blue and green, but we're not using red. Um, cool, um, I'm so very sorry about the, uh, about the videos. Um, but like I said, um, actually, I'm, I'm probably saving 10 minutes of your life uh, by not going over it. Um, I did cover a couple of main things in here about bearings. Um, two main different types of bearings, really, that are going to come across when you're building your radio-controlled helicopter. And that is the sealed bearing or the, uh, the thrust bearing. Now... Um, the thrust bearing, I've done a video on that and the video portrait, the video turned into be portrait and I couldn't work it out how to turn it landscape and all sorts. So that's dead. Um, and likewise with the uh, radial bearing, that too is dead because it, it turned out to be portrait. Um, so um, I've put this little video together about bearings in general. Um, so take a look. Number one. Bearings is an industry. Yes, there are people that talk bearings. Anyway, there is a grade in accordance with the performance level of the bearing. Uh, ABEC 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. What happened to 2, 4, 6, and 8? I've no idea. Perhaps there were trials. Don't know. But here's the thing. In radio controlled helicopters and aircraft, you're only ever going to come across uh, ABEC grade 1 and 3. And actually you're not going to know whether it's ABEC 1 or 3 and not even actually care whether it's 1 or 3. So I don't even know what the point of me mentioning this to you, apart from the fact that it's interesting, I think. Hey, let's all change career to the bearing industry. I can't fucking wait. Number two, there are many different types of ratings of bearings. The main ratings used in radio-controlled helicopters and aircraft is uh, RS, and ZZ. Now RS means rubber sealed. There is a very clear rubber seal all the way around the top and the bottom of the bearing and this keeps the dirt out but induces additional friction therefore less performance. ZZ stands for, I have no idea what it stands for to be honest with you, I, I researched it for ages. No, I couldn't find anywhere. What, is that, what, I mean, why have they called it ZZ? ZZ means that it's a closed bearing it's still going to keep all the dirt out. Um, there's far less friction and it's a much higher performance rating. So, in radio controlled helicopters, the majority of your bearings are going to be, guess what? ZZ. Number three, there is no requirement to slap half a ton of bearing grease on the underside and top side of a closed bearing. You'll have no effect on it whatsoever. None. Zero. Zilch. Except spray bearing grease all over your helicopter. If anything, apply it on the inner diameter, the inner sheath, but outside of that, there's no need. It's a waste of time. You're just wasting your time. Now, wasn't that exciting? Um, sadly though, the fact of the matter is, is that we do actually need to know about bearings when we're building the radio controlled helicopter. Uh, and we need to understand how they work because they are so crucial, so vital um, when it comes to making sure that you don't have any uh, wild vibrations or shakes whenever you're flying, etc. Quick description, what you're looking at here is a sealed bearing. You know now it's a ZZ bearing because there's no rubber seal going all the way around. And the bearing is in three main component parts. The outer ring here that you can see, uh, known as the outer race. The, uh, the bit in the middle here, this brass cover here, underneath here are all the balls that go all the way around, uh, the, uh, around the, the outside, uh, around the middle there. And then the inner, um, the inner ring that you can see here, uh, which is the inner race. 
So those three main component parts, I'm doing a right old hash job with this because I can't, I can't actually see. Um, but there you go. So there's the outer race. The bit in the middle is covers the balls. And then you've got the very inner ring there, which is known as the inner race. Uh, the inner race moves independent to the outer race. The bearing is usually held in a stationary position. And this type of bearing, the radial bearing or the sealed bearing, usually provides support to a shaft which is going through the middle there and usually spinning. So because the shaft is spinning, um, the forces emitted um, uh, 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 are uh, centrifugally. 360 degrees, the forces are being pushed out to, onto the bearing, onto the inner race, onto the balls, onto the outer race. Um, and that is what provides support and keeps that shaft in a stable central um, position. Uh, that's completely different to a thrust bearing and we'll cover a thrust bearing purely because the video is uh, dead uh, when we cover the main blade grips. But that is a radial bearing. So there we go, at least we learned something in part two um, and obviously we've got our tail ready, our tail assembly ready to go. It's been uh, complied with rule two, it's been built and then it's been Loctite with blue only. Um, and we're ready to go essentially. All we need to do now is we need to connect this to our boom via our torque tube and the front um, drive or the front gear uh, box which mounts into the um, into the main um, into the main uh, the, the main uh, the main damn what's it called frame <laughs> the main frame. Part three we will I promise you um, actually do a build but until then with my apologies, see you on the next video. Ciao.